Hello world, welcome to Not Nothing Tech Academy. We are in our, our third episode of solving a maze with Python with backtracking. If you have not watched the previous two episodes, uh, we will find the link in the description. So in this episode, we are going to cover the Pygame display part, but I was thinking that we can actually change the order a little bit and add the intelligence first and then do the Pygame display in the end. So let's start by taking, uh, forking the ripple, the code from episode two. So we don't edit the same code. So now what we have done till now is we have automated solving the maze, but we are not doing it in the most efficient way. For example, when we hit a roadblock here, we are going up all the way. And then eventually we come back and solve the problem, but we are not taking the most efficient route. So let me uncomment this and run it again. So if you look at the path we have taken here, we have come down all the way and from here, it would have been much easier to go right and go down. But what is happening is we are going down, turning right and coming up and taking that extra route. So now let's see how to avoid that. If we look at a move order here, our order is always fixed. But if we make this order dynamic, so we calculate the move order based on where the player is and where the target is actually is. So let's make a function to do that. So I'm going to call this um, find move order. Okay. I'm going to need the maze, the rows, the column, the current position where the player is and the position where our target is actually. So what is that we are basically going to do is we are going to try and check where our target is and decide how to move forward. Okay, good. So if the row in which I am is actually smaller, then the target, the direction in which I'm going to go first is going to be down because I am about the target, right? So let's add the direction down. And in the else case, we should probably go up. Okay. And let's do the same if the column in which I am in is less than the target column, then I will first try to go right. Else, I will go left. Perfect, good. So, what if the row, the player row, and the target row are the same, or what if the columns are the same? Uh, how many directions have I had already added into my move order? I know I need to try four directions up, down, left, right. But I don't know at this point if I have added all the four directions. So let's have a look to check the length of our move order is actually four. If it is less than four, 
then I need to check is probably my right direction is if not R in move order, if R is not there, then I append it. And I need to do the same for all the other directions too. I need to make sure they are there. And now we are not, we don't worry about the order in which this happens here because we have already determined the order with a few simple intelligence above. And at this point, we are only making sure that we are trying all the directions. Otherwise, we might not find the target. So let's return the move order. So basically, we are determining whether it is best to go down first or up first. Is it best to go right first or left first? And then we are keeping all the others as an option to make sure we explore the all the directions. So every time I need to determine the current order. So all we have to do now is fetch the latest order. By calling the function. So before I run the code with this command, let's look at our maze one more time. Now let's say our player is here. I put the player here and I put our target on the top here. So ideally the best path for us would be to go up and reach the target. But if you remember, our default order is always to go down. And right now I'm not calling this find move order function. So now let's see how our algorithm behaves. So what has basically happened is our player has explored all the path below here before he actually made it to the target. So the number of turns we have taken is here. Let's actually print the length of our moves. So we took a total of 55 turns before we actually reached our target. Now let's try to dynamically decide this order. So let's see what happens. We reached our target in just 13 turns because I know I have to go up first to reach the target. So that's the difference 55 to 13. And we achieved that by making a simple intelligent logic to decide which direction to go first. Hopefully that um, was clear. And uh, going back to our steps, we have done the intelligence part first. And in the next episode, all we will do is we would add a pie game display for this so it all looks pretty and it's not just in the console. So before we end the episode, let's try one more maze. I'll put my player at the end here and I'll put my target at the end here and I will surround my target with more blocks. So now the only way to reach is this way. So now let's see what happens. Okay, so 
everything seems good. We still took 29 turns to reach the target and we have explored all the path here. This could be made even more faster if we had actually gone up, left, and then right. Okay, again here, the left and right logic seems um, to have been taken at all here because we are in the same column actually, but there is a block running all the way. But at least we made it all the way to our target with uh, 29 turns, which is good. I do not see any backtracking here. So let's add some more blocks here to see if we can make the algorithm backtrack. So if I go up all the way, I will hit a dead end and then I need to backtrack to reach this. So let's see what happens. OK, I can see here some fours here. The, all the fours are dead ends. So I have gone up all the way there and I have backtracked and I have come up all the way here. So a total of 27 turns to reach the path. That's good. OK, perfect. Um, so in the next episode, let's do a pie game display for this. Uh, talk to you all in the next episode. Uh, bye world.